Hey everybody, it's Simply Easy with Amy, all about stoneware today. So why should you care about stoneware? Well, stoneware was actually the very, very first tool demonstrated at the very, very, very first party um, that was ever held with Pamper Chaff. And people went nuts over it. They were blown away at how a simple frozen pizza could turn into something that actually tasted really good. So stoneware has been a major part of Pamper Chaff's line for ever, ever since we started. So let me just talk a little bit about why you might want to care about them or maybe inspire you to dig them out because maybe you tuck them away somewhere and you keep using your metal pans and your glass pans which just don't cook as well. So first off, foods are going to cook evenly. How many of you have ever burned the edges of something, right? Even if it's a cheap frozen pizza or a pan of brownies or really anything, it doesn't matter. But you know how the edges burn? Um, or maybe the bottom burns. How many of you ever burn a batch of cookies? You know, and it's the bottom that's burned, not the whole cookie. The top looks great and you lift it up and the bottom's black. Mm, not cool. That will never happen on a stone. Everything cooks very evenly. With metal and glass, everything cooks from the outside edge and it moves in. With stoneware, everything um, on the stone heats through evenly, all at the same temperature, all at the same time. So no matter what you're cooking, everything's going to be the exact same. So you're not going to have, you know, any weird um, bottoms of your black, you know, bottom, bleh, black bottoms of your cookies, black bottoms of your biscuits, or your crust rolls, anything like that. That's never going to happen again. It's always going to be even. Now, you can't make the whole thing dark brown. That's possible. I've actually done that. Um, I was making just that Nestle Toilets recipe that we all love and, you know, chocolate chip cookies. And I had, and it's always the last pan, right? The last pan. The last pan I went into the oven. I cleaned up. I had five minutes, I grabbed my daughter, we walked down the, um, to the mailbox, she's chasing a butterfly, picking dandelions for me, and all of a sudden I said a lot of bad words, we ran back into the house, and the cookies had actually been in the oven for 33 minutes, oh my gosh. So that, um, as I pulled them out, expecting you know to open the door, because this is when I was a new consultant, and you know expecting smoke to come out, nothing happened. The cookies were dark brown, but they were dark brown completely evenly, both the top and the bottom. That's one of the beauties. Whatever color it is on the top, it will be the same color on the bottom. We took them off. They weren't black. In fact, we ate them. So, um, you know, it's a huge way to make sure you're not wasting food. So foods cook evenly, that's huge. It's going to take out any excess moisture. It's going to pump in excess steam. You're not going to have things that are really, really runny. Um, three year guarantee. Anything happens to it within three years. Um, Pamper just going to replace it for free. Now, if you take it, bash your husband over the head with it or somebody else, we're not covering that. Um, we don't cover it if you drop it. However, if any weird thing happens to, you know, during normal use, it's in the oven, you know, you're, you're just holding it and all of a sudden something weird happens, um, we will cover it and we'll get you a new one. Um, no lead filler. So I think that's really important. All of our stoneware, this I love, is made in the United States. It's from clay that's mined in the United States. U.S. trucks um, ship it to U.S. factories. U.S. factory workers put them together. They go on U.S. trucks to go to our distribution center um, and then come to your home. So U.S. made, and this way we can also guarantee there's nothing weird in them. And definitely no lead fillers like a lot of the ones that come from overseas. Um, no pre anything. You don't have to preheat. You don't have to pre-soak. You don't have to do any like weird, weird stuff. The only thing we say is the first three times you use it, to get the seasoning process started, you lightly oil it or grease it. I actually just, you know, unwrap the end of a stick of butter and just draw all over it. That's it. I do that the first three times I use it and I never, ever do it again. Totally helps with the seasoning process. Um, foods are going to stay warmer longer. You know how you have a metal pan and you pull the pizza out and you have your first piece and you go back to the second piece and it's already cooled off? That's not going to happen. Things are going to stay really nice and hot on a, on a pizza stone. If you're just doing a pizza, probably a good 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes. Um, lasagna, because it's so heavy and dense and thick, I have to let it sit out a solid hour before I think it's you know starting to cool off enough for me to maybe transfer it into other containers. Um, let's see, all different shapes and sizes, anything you can imagine. We have you know pieces like this that are cookie sheet, the large round stone that everybody calls the pizza stone. We have loaf stones that make the most amazing breads. Um, and then of course we have our glazed pieces. We have fully glazed pieces, which are great for entertaining because they can be used in the microwave or the stove and you can bake on them and serve, or they can just be beautiful serving pieces. But then we have the hybrid pieces, which are unglazed on the inside and glazed on the outside. So this is our deep cover baker. It's one of our top three best-selling stones because no matter what you put in there, it now creates a clay baking effect. 
and the food will blow your mind. So um, this will do like a chicken. Um, you can, and actually reminder, all of our stoneware is microwave and oven safe. So I can take a whole four pound chicken, throw it in here, 25 minutes in the microwave, it will come out and you can tug on the leg bone and it will just fall apart. It is so good, so juicy, so tender. And usually when we talk about microwave meats, everybody freaks out, which is why I used to love doing microwave meat at parties because it would blow people's minds. You could do um, a 10 to 12 minute pork tenderloin in here. It is juicy and tender. And I would have kids who were at the parties coming up to me, taking the food, you know, additional pieces of meat and their mom's going, my kid doesn't eat pork. How are you getting my kid to eat pork? And it was just so juicy and so tender and so easy. So we give you tons of recipe link pages. I think I have a 48 page um, uh, recipe booklet that I give you filled with recipes for this. Plus there's more online, but you could do um, like a four pound chicken. You could do it in the oven for an hour and 15 minutes. You could do, oh my gosh, roast tenderloin. Seriously, I do a roast beef tenderloin on a bed of stuffing and it will blow your mind. It just falls apart. Um, all the liquid stays in here because it's got the cover on it. it the meat just stays in its own juices. Fabulous. Anyway, all right, so all different shapes and sizes. Um, restaurant quality results. You know what, if you're supposed to have crispy cookies, you're getting crispy cookies. If you're supposed to have a crispy crust, you're gonna have that. If it's supposed to be softer, you're gonna have that. If you're supposed to have you know, tender meats, you're going to have that. It really truly does change how your food cooks. Um, easy cleaning, non-stick surface. All right, so this is the really cool part. Um, hot water and a little um, brown or blue scraper. So that is all you need to clean. Now, a lot of people freak out because we always say, you know, don't put soap on a stone. They're like, oh, but then it's not clean. Well, think about it. You know, you put raw chicken on there but then you cooked it and you ate it. So any of the weird chicken stuff or any other weird stuff is already now, you know, safe. And this is not going to be porous to the point where stuff stick, you know, sinks into here and causes you problems. So all you need to do is take a hot, um, hot water, not cold, not warm, hot, and a scraper, scrape off all the particles and you're good to go. If it's like greasy, like maybe you use the loaf pan to make um, meatloaf, you know what? Baking soda, a little bit of water, make a paste, Rub it all over, walk away from it. 10 minutes, an hour, overnight, really doesn't matter. Baking soda is totally safe. You flush it down in your sink, it's totally safe for the environment and you are good to go. Um, some people are like, oh, but I really, really, really want, you know, that cold, or um, um, that soap. Well, let me ask you this. If you did your dishes in cold, soapy water, would they get clean? And if you think about it, the answer is no. You do your dishes in cold, soapy water, they come out filthy, they're dirty, they're yucky, they're greasy. That's because soap isn't actually what's cleaning them. Soap is a loosening agent that helps you get everything off. Hot water is actually what cleans things. So it's kind of a, a twist on the thinking because we haven't really thought about that before, but that is really how it works. Um, I will tell you that as of um, 2020, some of our stones are now dishwasher safe. We actually changed the formula of the stones. The newer stones called Stone Fusion um, are actually dishwasher safe and um, they are also um, broiler safe. Okay, so before that, these were only heat safe um, to 400 degrees and now the new ones under the Stone Fusion line are um, going to be broiler safe. So that is it. These are my big loving, you know, I can't live without my stoneware reasons. Um, if you have questions about this or need to know more, please let me know. I'm always happy to help people try these out, learn a little bit more about them. And of course we give you, no matter really what recipe, what stone you get, um, I give you an awful lot of recipes for it. So plus you can use the ones that you're already doing at home. So anyway, I hope this was great for you. I hope you learned something. And as always, I hope to make your life simply easy in the kitchen. Thanks everybody.